Hello, my name is James Helfrich. I'd like to spend just a few minutes introducing you to some features of the C++ Data Structures textbook. This textbook is available both in print version as well as on an, an ebook version. I'm going to do my demonstration mostly using the ebook version. So we'll start with the overall organization of the textbook. There are 16 chapters in a collection of appendices. So the 16 chapters involve, first of all, data types, Boolean, integer, real numbers, then data structures, linked list, binary tree, binary search tree, and graph, and then finally, a collection of containers, vector list, deck, stack, queue, priority queue, hash, set, and map. Each chapter is organized the same. There's a definition, implementation, application, examples, exercise, and problems. So we'll start with a brief overview of the data structure, including a real an analogy of how something like this would work in the real world. For an example, for a linked list, sort of like a treasure hunt where you look for one node to the other to the other node, and you never know how far you have to go. Um, and for uh, a graph is like a mapping application. And then, we're going to have the definition. This is the client-facing perspective of how things work, all the public interfaces and how they are implemented. And so if you're going to teach the class in a way that um, people are going to, students are going to use the data structures to solve problems, then the definition phase will be really important to you. And this includes both a syntax, a discussion of the syntax, as well as a demonstration of how the various operations work. Okay. Next is the implementation. If you'd like to have the students implement this data structure from scratch, then it'll show you the class diagrams as well as the pseudocode for the various aspects. Now, notice that sometimes there is more than one implementation option. For an example, if I was going to use the deck, the deck has um, several different ways we could do it. We could use the deck as a list, as a wrapping array, as a array of pointers, and finally what the standard template library uses is an array of array. In each one of these, the pros and cons of the various implementation op operations is discussed. Next, we have some applications. What can you do with, a, with this data structure? Um, so for an example, with a vector, you might want to implement a Fibonacci. Um, with a binary tree, you might want to implement um, the Huffman codes. Um, or various traversal options or things like that. So many of the classic uh, problems are presented in the application. Finally, example. Example will walk through um, manipulations, so show you some code and then what happens in underlying data structure one step at a time. Exercises. Um, these are designed to be for in-class exercises. So you uh, put the problem on the screen and have the students trying to predict the output. In the student-facing material, there are no solutions provided for these, so you can use it for assessment. Um, but in the teaching material, the keys are provided for each one of these. And finally, the problems. And each of the problems are going to be to implement the data structure from scratch or perhaps implement one of the applications. Now, in addition to these, um, there is also a collection of appendices. Um, for an example, um, the algorithms are presented in pseudocode. So how does the pseudocode work? and there's going to be a, a description of each one of these. Um, UML class diagrams, we always show the solution is a UML class diagram and the implementation, and the students might need a little bit of re refresher as to how these things work. Operator overloading, since, these, um, since the C++ um, standard template library overloads many operators, especially the iterator, you might need a review about how the various operators work, like the square bracket operator for um, the vector and for the deck and for the map, um, the increment operator for the iterators and things like that. Um, templates, every, sand, every um, data type, ex a data structure except for the... Um, the graph uses a template. So how do templates work? Um, iterator, how to use an iterator and the syntax of the various aspects of the iterator. Um, nested class, many of the, of the uh, containers use nested classes such as the set and map. Um, namespace, um, in order to, when we implement our, these data structures, um, 
we were going to make custom colon colon vector, which is going to be different than SCD colon colon vector. And they should behave exactly the same. So if I say using namespace custom or using namespace STD, then the behavior should be exactly the same. And so all the solutions are presented using a custom namespace to facilitate this kind of testing and, and checking. Recursion, uh, because we traverse a binary tree um, and even a linked list with recursion, um, this will give the students a review about how that works if they, um, if they have questions. Um, many of the standard template libraries only operate at full performance when a custom allocator is used. And this allows the, um, the writer of the code to separately allocate a block of memory and then call the constructor on the block of memory. This is really important because, for an example, with a vector, if I reserve 100 slots but only use two, I only expect two constructors to be called. So how does the allocator work? And this uh, appendix reviews that. Um, algorithmic efficiency obviously is super important with regards to um, the efficiency of the algorithms, how we measure it. Um, some students may be a little rusty on that, so the appendix will discuss that. And of course, a glossary for, for, and an index for, for various terms. Every chapter in the textbook also has um, slides associated with them, um, unit tests for the various labs, as well as YouTube videos explain, demonstrating the various data structures. Please look, take a look at the other videos in this collection uh, for an idea of how this works.